So this is left ventricular hypertrophy. The most obvious finding is these QRS complexes are pretty big. As you can see, V6 extends all the way up. It ends up here, that's the top of our QRS complex, halfway into V5's territory. So the features of left ventricular hypertrophy, high voltage QRS complexes, so we've got deep S waves in V1, tall R waves in V5 and 6, you can have a left axis deviation, and you get this left ventricular strain pattern, okay? So that's ST depression and T wave inversion in these left lateral leads like V5 and V6. So there are multiple different ECG criteria that can be used to identify left ventricular hypertrophy. Ultimately though, you're using the ECG to become suspicious of hypertrophy, and if you really want to be sure, you need to do an echo. But you should suspect left ventricular hypertrophy if the S wave depth in V1 plus the R wave in V5 or 6 adds to greater than 35 millimeters, so that's more than seven big squares. Left axis deviation in the presence of tall QRS complexes would also point you towards left ventricular hypertrophy. And there are some non-voltage criteria, so if you see that left ventricular strain pattern of ST depression, T wave inversion in the left side it leads, well that should also make you think of hypertrophy. And if you have an increased R wave peak time, as in the time from the start of the QRS complex to the time that the R wave reaches its peak, that's greater than 50 milliseconds in V5 or 6, and that should also prompt you to think of left ventricular hypertrophy. And so I've thrown in this example here, the S wave depth is 17.1 millimeters in this lead, and when the ECG is on the computer it's great because you can measure these things quite precisely. Um, and then over in V6 we've measured it and it's 34.2 millimeters. So this obviously adds to more than 35, and so this is left ventricular hypertrophy.